And finally, the last topic of this show, let's talk a little NBA. And we're going to talk about it from the perspective of Memphis fans. The Grizzlies are absolutely rolling right now. And we are recording on Sunday night. Uh, this is going to come out on Tuesday morning. Obviously, there is the MLK Day game between the Grizzlies and the Pelicans. It'll happen between now and then. But that doesn't change what the storyline is. Taylor Jenkins, as a rookie head coach, he's like 34 years old, I think. Uh, and John Morant, who is a rookie, 20 years old, he, along with Jaron Jackson Jr., Dylan Brooks, who's a third-year player, um, this team is fantastic. They are a ton of fun. Uh, tell me, I mean, I know that you've watched a lot of it. You've watched uh, the Mavericks a lot this year. You've watched, you know, some of the big-name teams. How, what is the ceiling for this Grizzlies team? The ceiling for this Grizzlies team is probably, probably the eighth seed is the ceiling because I do think there's a, there's a difference. When you get into the playoffs, just young teams don't win um, in the playoffs, but I think it's important for them to get those minutes. Uh, I absolutely think that I would fight like hell to get the eighth seed and to be able to have two home games in Memphis where we can say, thanks, thanks for the season try to win one of those and, and, uh, and, but have your stars have the core that you're building around, have your coach be involved in meaningful, very difficult, grinding it out, hard playoff games. I think that's extremely important for a young basketball team. Um, I, before the season started, when we were talking draft stuff last year said, I was ecstatic that Memphis got the two spot. Yeah. And it wasn't because we could have gotten the five spot or the eight spot or whatever. It was because I didn't want the one spot because I knew what would happen. I knew everybody in the world said, you got to take Zion. And I made it abundantly clear. If you made me the general manager of the Grizzlies and you gave me the number one pick overall and Zion Williams was standing there and John Morant was standing there, I made it abundantly clear last year before the season started, before anybody went to a camp or anything, that I would take John Morant. Yeah. I I've seen what he does and I know how that translates to the NBA. The NBA has become a run and gun offensive basketball team, but that guy he still steals the ball. That's the only defense that's ever being played now is is in in big time high profile basketball so if you can get picks, if you can steal the basketball and he can steal the basketball. Um but on the other side of that is he, he has the best court vision of any point guard I've seen in a long time. He, it, I feel like the basketball is on a string, and he knows where it is at all times. It can make it do anything he wants it to do. He finds the open man when nobody even knows that guy is there. The other night when he did, it, it looked like he was going to the hole, and he comes up, and he passes the ball behind him. And it's like nobody even saw that guy standing there, and he's wide open, and he's two feet from the goal. He just grabs it and throws it down. It's like, holy shit, how did that happen? <laughs> I, I think he's the most exciting player in the league right now. I really do. We've watched Harden for up 10 years score 50 points a night, and it's kind of gotten boring. And and, and some of that's a testament to Harden, but he – he gets fouled. He, he gets a lot of calls and he makes a lot of free throws and he just shoots a lot of mediocre range threes. Like they're nothing really exciting about the three anymore. So he just shoots a lot of bland shots. The, the two most exciting players that I've watched this year are Luca and Ja, And it's a, it's a rookie guy and a second year guy. And they are incredible. And some of that is because the big stars are, you know, uh, load management, like, you know, watching their time, watching their bodies, taking care of themselves. You know, Giannis is still probably the freakiest person in the NBA right now. And I think the best overall player in the NBA, but he, I, I think the, the future of the game is in great hands with, with two young guys like Luca and Ja, and, uh, and Memphis is, is pretty cool to be a part of that. Yeah, I, I do agree. For the Grizzlies, the, the unsung hero here is DeAnthony Melton. Uh, yes. This guy, I, since Ja came back, he is a lot of the reason why this team is able to um, is able to do what they do. 
I mean, he, he's all over the stat sheet. And sometimes it's not even the stat sheet. He just he, – he brings to the Grizzlies kind of what Tony Allen brought – and it's not the same thing by any stretch of the imagination. Not, not but, close, but yeah. But it, it's it's kind of the same. Like he just he glues everything together really really well. Uh, you've got, you know, you got Brandon Clark whose per is nineteenth in the league. He's twenty two point four five. So his player efficiency rating is way up there. Uh, De'Anthony Melton is seventieth. Uh, John Morant is let's see his is eighteen point seven seven. He's third on the team. And his uh, PER is 58th in the league. Like these guys are young. D'Anthony Melton is a, a second-year guy. You know, yeah, I, I I love the point, Brandon. Uh, you brought up uh, Clark. Oh, he's uh, incredible. That guy. That guy. I mean, this core is going to be really good if we can find a way to keep this team together. I mean, you keep Dylan Brooks, you, and he's a third-year guy, but he was injured yeah. for a lot of his first and second season. Um, they. This team, Jonas Valanciunas is second on the team in PER, and he is, let's see, 22nd in the league, I think, as far as that goes, 21st in the league. Uh, he, like, these guys are all incredible. Like, they, they work so well together, and I think that's the, the biggest uh, part of a game that people don't pay attention to in the NBA is team chemistry. And it's like that with college basketball as well, but, but maybe more so in the NBA – if you got guys in a locker room that don't like each other, uh, that that becomes a big time problem. But when you've got a, a core like these young guys that the Grizzlies have, and then you've got your your veterans with Jay Crowder and Solomon Hill, guys like that, um, and then you've also got you know Grayson Allen and Dylan Brooks, Kyle Anderson, who's been around for a while, but he's also one of those guys that understands his role on the team. You know, he played for for Pop forever uh, with San Antonio, like. This is the the beginnings of something really really big for the Grizzlies. Uh, I'm I'm happy about it. It's exciting to watch. They've won seven in, uh, seven in a row uh, at this point. Their team record I think is nine. So if they beat the Pelicans on Monday, which you'll be listening to this after that, you'll be able to tell after that, uh, they go and they play at the Celtics to try and get to number nine. So we'll see. We'll see if they can set the record and whatnot, but. So far, so good. They have they've been a lot of fun. Uh, tell me, tell me what you think about the Mavericks. Um, I know you've watched a lot of them. I haven't gotten a chance to. I've only seen two games this year. I know Luca is incredible. I mean, Luca's just. I mean, yeah, he's but, he's one he, of the most special players I've ever seen. Last year, I screamed it from the rooftops. Yeah. We did a little NBA coverage before the draft, and I said, "There's no doubt in my mind this kid should go first. He should go number one overall. He's going to be the best player out of this draft. Does he just make he's going to be the best like, player out of this draft next year? He's going to be the best player out of this draft five years from now. He'll be the best player out of this draft ten years from now. At no point in time in the league will you look back and him not be the best player that came out of that draft. I agree. Uh, does he just make everybody else around him better? Or... Yes, this is what this is what elite level point guards do. And the league kind of went through a weird phase where the point guards were kind of always the best players, but they were high, high profile scorers. It was your Curries, it was your your Westbrooks and your Hardens, and and those were your great, great point guards in the game. And we being Memphis guys grew up with Mike Conley, who was kind of like the anti point guard. Like he he didn't look anything like those guys. He was a true traditional point guard that, you know. Like a like a CP3 in his heyday. That's right. Yeah, he could he could shoot, but but for the most part, he got you the ball where you could capitalize on things. And uh and and that was not kind of the way the league was going. And you had to have a a a point guard that could be, you know, really athletic, really quick. Um and uh, a, can, can shoot, which Jaws developing a shot, and, uh, and and then also get everybody else involved. I think Luca's that special. I think he's that good. I think uh, I think we're going to have a lot of fun watching the NBA going through the rest of this season. Uh, this this league moves at such a fast pace that in college basketball, it's difficult to try and do podcasts around you know results and whatever else. But we will no, continue just, watching storylines, and we're gonna we're gonna yeah. follow our regiment and when when. You know, when there we will cover everything that's happened before that, and we will talk about everything that's going to happen after that the best we can, and that will be just the way we've got to handle it. Um, but, but you know, this is a very local thing. It's a very Memphis thing for us, but, but not really if you're an NBA fan. That's just not the truth. 
the the two biggest NBA writers that I know and I follow are, are Ringer guys, and it's Bill Simmons and Ron Rosillo, and and they're 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 the the NBA guys that I've grown up with, and and follow, and both of those guys do nothing but tweet this stuff out on their shows. They talk about the number one league pass team. And the reason for having the league pass right now is the Memphis Grizzlies. You can get all the – you're going to see Giannis on ESPN and TNT. You're going to see LeBron and, and Kawhi and Harden and all those guys on TNT. But you need to pay for the league pass to watch Ja. Yeah, and he, he's worth every penny. He's worth every penny. Yeah, it, it feels like every time that we watch a game – it, it's like we're waiting for that moment, and it has it's come up in every single game. Every game, there's been something special that has happened. And so, yeah, uh, no, he's he's impressive. Is there anything else that we need to hit on for this episode? No, man, I think we're good. I think we are. I think we are. Of course, you guys know. Go over to winningcureseverything.com. You can find all of our picks, previews, podcasts, videos, social media platforms. We're on Facebook. We are on Twitter. If you're watching on YouTube, hit subscribe. Hit that like button. We do appreciate you guys for watching the show. If you're on the podcast, make sure you hit subscribe. Leave a nice review. We appreciate you guys, as always. Go over to tunicatravel.com. Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. they got six incredible sports books. You can find more information, like I said, over at tunicatravel.com. Chris, we will be back on Wednesday, and we'll actually be doing that one in person, right? Yes, sir. Dig that. All right, we'll see you guys again later. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.